morning tribe it is the middle of june already it's nice on winter in south africa and i'm enjoying every moment of it i am missing my fireplace that i had on the farm but that's not the biggest train smash in the world um the house we are in now is nice and warm and cozy and i am cozy in my one size fits all snuggle thing Last winter, when we were in Hartpest Port next to a big dam, it, it was freezing cold. And my husband saw these one-size-fits-all snuggly things, something, something, fleecy, something, something. And he bought two. They're quite big, because it's a one-size-fits-all. And they hang down mid-thigh for me. Um, but I lived in them last winter. So this winter... He started getting cold, so he decided, well, he also wants some of these, so he's going to order two more, which he did. But when they arrived, they were not the same. The same up here, they, they're massive, they, they're big, but they're so nice and comfy. But the length, he took them out of the parcel and he put one on and he came around the corner and I just burst out laughing. It was down to his ankles. So it's a dress this is a dress. And um, so we swapped. He took the, the short ones and I took the long ones. And I can tell you I am living in this thing. I dress in the morning and I put this over my clothes. And it's just so comfy. It's like getting a hug from somebody. It's, it's just amazing. So um, yeah, you will probably see me in these for the rest of the winter. <laughs> <laughs> if it was red, I could have passed for, for Mother Christmas or something like that. But anyway, they are very nice and warm. So, Okay, so um, the testers and I are taking a break from the cabled blanket that we are working on. Simply because it becomes monotonous after a while to knit cables with that thick yarn all the time. And it's hard on the hands, I must admit. The, the thick yarn is a bit hard on the hands, especially if, like me, you have arthritis in your hands. And it's winter, so we want to make some winter items in the meantime. So we've put the blanket down for a month or so. We will get going again on the blanket probably in August. And um, we should have it finished by the end of the year. And if it's not finished by the end of the year, then we carry on next year. But anyway, so that's on the back burner for a while, which is good news for the Patreon subscribers because they get my patterns for free and there's been nothing for a long time. So the Mohansi blanket has been published. You must have seen that on social media. Mohansi is a little miracle baby. Um, she was conceived against all odds long after her parents gave up trying and her mum picked out the colours and um, as I've said before I don't like baby blankets with holes in so that entire blanket was crocheted in star stitch. Um, I will put a photo of the blanket at the end of the video for you to see. Um, it was lovely knitting that, but um, now I can say, okay, I'm not going to do star stitch again anytime soon. Star stitch, daisy stitch, whatever you want to call it, same thing. So Mohanzi is done and she's out and the Patreon subscribers got that for free. And then I had to find a quick, fast gift for a friend. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to go on Ravelry and, and find a pattern for a scarf and knit that. You know what? I spent hours on Ravelry and eventually I just put it down and I designed one. Um, I said to one of my friends this week, I am addicted to the thrill of publishing a pattern. I think that's the problem. It's not that I don't want to use somebody else's pattern. I've done it before, but it doesn't give me nearly the same satisfaction that my own design gives me. So I designed a scarf. It's going to be published today. Now let me tell you about the name. This was so funny. Okay, so I went back into corporate last year in September. And I'm currently uh, working a lot on Microsoft Power Platform. 
um, developing a solution in Power Platform and reporting in Power BI and whatever. So I was stuck this week with a formula in Power BI that didn't want to work the way I think it should. It didn't give me this, the correct answer for the calculation. And I, I spoke to a friend who also works in Power BI and he said to me, have you asked chat GPT? And I thought, are you crazy? And he said, give it a try. Now, I know about chat GPT. Um, my daughter complains, but at least she's a teacher that, um, and she's an English teacher. The children don't write their own essays anymore and their own speeches. They ask chat GPT to write it for them. So let me, if you don't know, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence bot. Um, you go to the website, you register a profile and you ask him a question and he gives you an answer. So I thought, oh, well, let's give this thing a try. So I went to ChatGPT and um, I said to him, I need help with DAX. Now DAX is an acronym for um, the formulas in Power BI, data analytics expressions, I think it is. And he promptly replied and said to me, Dax is this and this and this and this. And he gave me this long explanation. And then he said, what do you need help with? And I thought, hmm, impressive. So I said, well, I have these tables. They are in this relationship and I want this to happen with this column and that I explained the whole thing to him and I said I'm using this formula but it's not giving me the correct results and I gave him the formula and I I literally did this and I thought let me see what you can come up with because I was still not believing seconds it's not even seconds it's split seconds and he starts explaining to me why my formula won't work and how to fix it. And I literally copied and pasted the formula that he gave me and voila, it worked. So I have a new best friend. His name is ChatGPT. So this little scarf that I designed and knitted for a friend for a gift has leaves on the edge. And I wanted to call it Lacy Leaves because it's lace. And um, I went on to Ravelry and I searched the term Lacy Leaves and I got 85 hits, 85 patterns on Ravelry already with Lacy Leaves in the title. And I thought, oh, well, let me ask ChatGPT. So I went and I said to him, I need a nice name for a scarf with leaves in it. And I kid you not, he threw me out like 20. I think I've still got them somewhere. Let me check quickly. I think they're still on my tester group. I had such a giggle about this. I mean, this is just next level. Um, can't be too far back. Uh, instead, leafy veil, foliage finesse, nature's embrace, botanical bliss, whispering leaves, um, enchanted canopy, leaf cascade, sylvan serenity, Leafy elegance, garden delight, leaf lullaby, verdant vines, nurturing nature, leafy whispers, leafy haven, serenade of leaves, leafy enchantment, forest flare, leafy splendor. Now how's that? In split seconds, I got this whole list of names to choose from. So, um, Leafy Whispers it is, and Leafy Whispers will be released today. I will put a photo of that for you at the end of the video as well. It's a very nice little lace scarf. I don't have it with me because I've already gifted it. Um, it knits up with 100 gram of sock yarn. So it's perfect for that orphan skein in the stash that doesn't have friends. You know, if you're anything like me, you will buy one skein just because it's beautiful, not thinking what you're going to do with it. And then in the end, you're sitting with all these little orphans that you don't know what to do with. So this is perfect. So um, Leafy Whispers will come out. Is it now Leafy Whispers? Now I've confused myself. <laughs> uh, what did we call her? I, th I think I said Leafy Whispers. Leafy Whispers. Leafy Whispers will be published today. And obviously for my Patreon supporters, it will be free of charge as always. 
And then when I tried this thing on, I thought, oh, wow, I like this. I never knitted scarves for myself. I knitted shawls, but I never wore them. I, don't, I just don't like them. If I put them back to front like a scarf, it's too much here. It's, it's, I can't, I don't even wear necklaces or stuff that's heavy here. It, it makes me feel claustrophobic. So this shawl thing that was here was just too much. So I never wore them. And I don't like a long straight scarf. It's always this big knot or something in the front that's in my way. And this little scarf, I like it. It's just enough to keep you warm and cozy without being bulky. So if you put a jacket on over it, it's divine. So I thought, hmm, I need some of these. So I'm on a scarf streak now. So yesterday, my one tester said to me, Hilda, are you going to design more than one or is this now one and done? Because I need more. And I said, well, I need more. I, I need some myself. I gifted that one. So I'm definitely going to make more, I'm going to design more, and I'm going to cast on right now. So I sat in front of the TV yesterday, we were binge watching on Naked and Afraid. And um, I, I'm well over halfway already, so that one will be coming soon. And this one's name has not been decided yet, but we'll see. So this one is going to need a lot of blocking anyway. So the scarf starts down very um, small and then it goes bigger and bigger and bigger until it's like this and then we take it smaller again. So this still needs to be blocked. It's not going to look that great now. But it's these little diamonds on the side that's going to make this nice pointy edge once you've blocked and steamed it a little bit. Okay, so this one we will still see what she will be called. But anyway, so while I was knitting this, while I was knitting the first one, I thought by myself, yes, I, I, I wish I had kitty needles, small knitting needles, because there's the, the, the circular needles are nice for everything, but they, I, I don't know, it's such a small thing that the cable was irritating me. Even with the small cable, I just, I don't know why. It, it's just, I, I thought yes I wish I had kitty needles and yesterday when I cast it on the second one I thought Hilda you idiot you've got double pointed needles so ha oh, this is from my double pointed needle set and I've just put a um, a needle stopper on this I think this is from Ulip I'm not sure I've had them for years so I stuck this on the one end and I made myself kitty needles with my double pointed needles ha. so these are knit pro gingers the double pointed needles and i'm knitting with them for the first time ha. yeah so this afternoon there's a big rugby game between the bulls and the cheetahs i'm a bull my husband is a cheetah so there's a definitely going to be constant cheering today it doesn't matter who's doing great somebody's going to be screaming and I will be knitting this in front of the TV again. I plan to finish it tonight. I should be able to. I did all of this yesterday. So the last little downhill is going to go very fast. Yeah. Now I've told you before about the Harmony books. And I want to show you again. They've been out of print for years. Many years. I think the, the one I have was printed in 1998 and I know my mom had the same books but they were narrow little books like this they were like two-thirds of the size of the width of an A4 paper and what this is is only stitch patterns nothing else it's just a stitch pattern and it tells you what the stitch counts should be to to knit this it should be a multiples of six plus one this one is multiples of 12 plus one this is multiples of 16 plus 11 so it only gives you the stitch pattern and this is how my mom taught me to knit um we never had patterns i mean ravelry wasn't existed when we were kids and the only patterns you would get would be in magazines. And my mom firmly believed you don't, you don't knit something from a magazine. There will be mistakes in. Anyway. So she taught me to knit with this. We designed our own jerseys. 
and we picked a stitch pattern you would cast on the ribbing knit the ribbing and then you would think okay what stitch pattern do i want go into the book and in the last row of the ribbing you adjust the stitches you add a few more to knit up the rest and we knitted in panels front panel back panel sleeve sleeve join them all together and knit the ribbing around the neck so thankful for knitting top down everything in one piece i don't like sewing the seams i really don't but if you can get your hands on this book, they're called the Harmony Guides. And they are really, really worth the money. If you can find them in a second-hand bookstore, buy them. Um, the vol Volume 1 is more geared for the newbies. It's knitting techniques, how to knit. Although there are some things in there that are very good to have, even if you're an old hand. And then 2, 3 and 4 are like this it's there's there's a little bit of everything in the book let me see there's knit and pull patterns knit and pull panels rip patterns cable patterns cable panels or over lace patterns lace panels and then patterns for texture and color and then edging patterns so it's it's a little bit of everything but it's very very good to have and then the fifth one is Erin. It's just cables and and Erin panels. It's beautiful. So most of the Erin Caress blanket, most of the stitch patterns I got from that number fifth, uh, number five, number fifth, oh, number five book. And I'm using it again this time. It's just so, so versatile. You can do literally anything with it. Right. So what else is happening in my life? Well, last week was knit in public day. I refused to go to some Yarni event in, I told you last, last month. So I went to Monte Cassino and I spent some time in the bird gardens and I sat, sat there on a little bench and um, spent some knitting on the scarf there. It's quite nice. And um, yeah, I, I know there's been great gatherings last Saturday for Worldwide Knitting Public Day. I hope you did your bit. I hope you went somewhere and knitted or crocheted or did something yarn related to um, draw some new blood in. We need to get new people into the craft always. Okay, so I'm going to finish that scarf and I'm going to order more sock yarn. Believe it or not, I've got no sock yarn in my stash. Nothing, nothing. I'm going to order more sock yarn to make a few more. I don't know how many I'm going to make. But I'm going to make a few because I need a few scarves and I don't knit the same pattern twice. I don't like it. So there's a few scarf patterns on the way for you. Um, this one will probably come out sometime next week when the testers are done testing. Luckily, it's a very fast little project. So you can look forward to a couple of scarf patterns for me. And then I've still got the jersey that I want to do with the black and yellow. I haven't started yet. And I've promised my husband a cable jersey this winter, so I must still think about that. So yeah, I've got a lot to keep me busy until we get going with the cable blanket again. But yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there. Life is hard enough without putting all these stupid rules on ourselves to say I have to do this first before I can do that and I have to be done by then. For what freaking reason are you stressing yourself out so much? Um, one of my friends, Dorette, she shared a link with us a couple of weeks ago. This woman went for therapy at her psychologist and the psychologist asked her, um, what is stressing you out right now? And she said, my dishes. And the psychologist said to her, but why? She said, because I have to rinse them before I put them in the dishwasher. And I am just so tired and so overwhelmed that I just can't get myself to the point of rinsing the dishes. Now, I know for some people that might sound totally stupid, but it's a very real thing. People with mental health issues are often overwhelmed i know that i've been there so the psychologist looked at her and she said to her run the dishwasher twice put them in the dishwasher just like that and run the dishwasher twice so i want to say to you today enjoy your craft stop stressing yourself out about oh, 
oh, I have to finish this first before I can do that. I have to use this yarn before I can buy that yarn. I have to have this finished by the end of the month. If there's no real reason for that, why are you pressuring yourself like that? It's just a waste of time. You stealing your own joy. You stealing your own joy from the craft. Just enjoy the craft. It's there to be a mental crutch for us. It helps us relax. It helps us focus. It helps us unwind. Focus on that. Use your knitting. Use your crochet just to relax. I call it a broom for my brain. When I'm crafting, I sit and I think, why am I feeling overwhelmed? Why do I have this knot in my stomach? Oh, okay, it's because of that. Huh. How am I going to handle that? What would be the best way to handle that? And I sort it out in my head while I'm crafting. And I can honestly recommend it. Just enjoy your craft. Don't let your craft become another burden, another thing that you have to concentrate on. It's not necessary. Just enjoy the craft. Okay, I hope you're going to have a wonderful month. I'll see you in July again. And um, hopefully there will be another few scarves published by then. And then we'll see where we are and what we're going to do after that. Yeah, um, I'm just going with the flow and designing what I feel like. I'm not going to put rules on myself. I don't see the worth in that. I hope you have a blessed month. I hope you're going to have a great slow Saturday. Mine is not going to be that slow. I'm clocking in at 10 o'clock for a few hours of overtime. And then after that, I'm going to plonk in front of the TV and watch rugby with my hubby and knit something and enjoy it. I hope you will enjoy your craft as well. And um, if you are bored, go to ChatGPT. I have a new best friend. His name is ChatGPT. Go and ask him a few questions and see what he comes up with. I'm sure you will enjoy it. See you next month.